What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Here we are with another reaction video. How Jashankar made India powerful using India Middle East Corridor Geopolitical Case Study. Before we can dive into this video, make sure you guys subscribe, ring the notification bell, give the video a thumbs up, and let's do it. Hi everybody, ever since Dr. Jayashankar has taken office as the external affairs minister, he has done some incredible things for the reputation and relationship of India. During the Russia-Ukraine war, when the entire world was pressurizing us to buy oil at a premium, Dr. Jayashankar protected us from the pressure of the West so that we could get discounted oil from Russia and that helped India curb inflation in 2021. If you are looking at there energy purchases from Russia, I would suggest that your attention should be focused on Europe. But I suspect looking at the figure probably uh, our total purchases for the month would be less than what Europe does in an afternoon. Tell me if buying Russian mm. gas is not funding the war? I mean, why is it? It's only Indian money and uh, oil coming to India which funds, but it's not gas coming to Europe which funds. Mm. While well, the entire world got divided Breach. between supporting the US and Russia during the Russia-Ukraine war, we were very strategically able to sell our services to the US and buy oil from Russia. The Russian military mm. has begun a brutal assault on the people of Ukraine. Without provocation, without justification, without necessity, this is a premeditated attack. He's attacked a friendly country without any provocation. Nous appuierons l'Ukraine sans hésiter et nous prendrons toutes nos responsabilités pour protéger la souveraineté et la sécurité. While Beijing didn't openly support Moscow in its invasion of Ukraine, Europe has to grow out of the mindset that Europe's problems are the world's problems, but the world's problems are not Europe's problems. So we were Freeze. literally in the sweet Freeze. spot of world trade without getting sanctioned. Similarly, now, when the world is divided into two parts because of the Israel-Palestine conflict, because of our diplomacy, again, we are best friends both with the Israelis as well as the Arabs. Now, 99% of India only knows up to this point. But what they don't know is that this diplomatic non-alliance strategy, even during the most critical times, has given India a golden instrument of growth. This instrument is called the India Middle East Economic Corridor. Ooh. To tell you about it, in September 2023, in the G20 summit, India, US, UAE, Germany, Italy and EU, we all came together to sign an agreement that will put India at the centre of world trade. Global leaders announced a historic economic trade route. In this time, this Bharat, Pashtim Asia and Europe will be the economic integration of Europe. And the upcoming economic corridor is being built as an alternative to China's PRI. And this agreement oh, is so, wow. so crucial that all leaders across the world, from Mohammed bin Salman to Netanyahu to even Biden, have addressed this corridor as a crucial instrument of growth for the world economy. And this route has everything from shipping lanes to railways to even undersea cables and solar grids Dang. passing through countries with a GDP of $47 trillion. And cherry on the cake, this is perhaps the best strategy for us to counter the rising power of China. This is one of the most important contributions of Dr. Jai Shankar and his diplomatic mastery over international relations. So in this episode today, let's try to understand what is this India Middle East Economic Corridor? How did Jai Shankar's diplomacy help us build the India Middle East Economic Corridor? How will it help the economy of India? And most importantly, what are the business lessons that we can learn from this diplomatic mastery of India? Yeah, I think uh, Jay Shankar is an absolute genius, and I think he's absolutely loved by the Indian people uh, as the Minister of Foreign, was it Foreign Relations or Defense? I'm not sure which one it was, but uh, he's absolutely incredible at his job. He's absolutely phenomenal. He's a phenomenal diplomat. Uh, and the man, all his comments and statements are just right on point. He calling out hypocrisy. 100% and I guess in, he'll put the Indian in that situation where it's like, hey, like, we not picking a side. You feel me? We cool, we cool with both sides. And with being in that situation, they've been able to benefit without having to force themselves to pick one side or the other, right? They've been great by we not choosing a side. We're cool, you know what I'm saying? We're cool with the U.S., but we're also cool with Russia. We're going to steal buy from them, but we still going to trade with the U.S. Hey, with the Israel and Palestine, hey, we not, we not picking a side. We're cool with both sides. So, they smart over there. 
But before we continue, let me introduce you to our education partners of today's episode, and Let's that skip is the sponsorship. People always skip sponsorships. As usual, let's start with the basics. You see, the EU and US are India's biggest trading partners, and we trade more than hundred billion dollars worth of goods. Yeah. And yeah. as of now, our trade happens through a single shipping route. This route is none other than the Red Sea Swiss Canal route. And here's where there is a big, big problem. So, if a cloth manufacturer in Mumbai wants to send his products to Greece, he would load his goods in a ship at JNPT port, and then this ship would pass through the Arabian Sea, get into the Red Sea via Bab el Mandeb, and then it would cross the busy Swiss Canal to get into the Mediterranean Sea, and finally it would reach Europe. This journey takes anywhere between 15 to 16 days. Similarly, 65%—I repeat, 65% of India's crude oil imports from Iraq and Saudi Arabia. Pass through the Swiss Canal, and even our trade with North yeah. Africa depends on this exact same route. Oh, Now, wow. the reason why this is a big, big problem is because if anything happens to this route, our crude oil prices will skyrocket, our oh. exports will become costly, and the Indian economy will be drastically affected. Because if this route is closed, then the ships will have to go all the way down to the Cape of Good Hope around Africa and then reach India. And this route will add another eight thousand nine hundred kilometers to the shipping route and yeah. two more weeks Dang. to the shipping time. Yeah. As a result, Dang. the cost of our goods will shoot up and inflation will happen in India. Now you might say, bro, what are you saying? We've been using this route for one fifty years now. Then how is this suddenly a problem today? Well, firstly, it is estimated that 30% of the container volumes and 12% of the international trade occurs through this region. So there is a lot of traffic in this single channel. And that what makes, makes matters worse is that out of this 190 km odd Swiss canal, about 80 km, as in half of this canal, is just a single lane. So if any ship oh. gets stuck over here, or even if there is a minor bombing that happens in this lane. This lane will be closed for a very long time. In fact, we oh. all know what happened in 2021 when a ship got stuck in this canal for just six days, right? Now it's one of the world's most important shipping routes, and it's blocked. A giant container ship wedged from bank to bank, blocking one of the world's most important shipping lanes. God this is dang. no ordinary highway blockage. Nearly 19,000 ships pass through a year, more than 50 a day, carrying around 12%. Of the world's trade volume, ever given, which I'm sure you've been following, is 400 meters long, carrying 18,000 containers, and it's been wedged across the canal. So, just because of this one ship, Jesus. a large chunk of the world trade was stopped. There were huge delays and losses to the traders, and insurance premiums went up. As a result, there was a temporary trade crisis, a shipping crisis, and shortage of goods were felt all across the world. So yeah, if that's if that can cause an issue that big, y'all de definitely have to get a second route immediately because that's insane. So in short, this is a very small and congested route for world trade. Yeah. Secondly, there is a lot of geopolitical tension in this region, and a classic example of the same is the Red Sea conflict. The war in Gaza has spilled over into the Red Sea, with the Houthis attacking commercial vessels in the globally critical waterway. Hatta wa fil adwan wa rafi al hisar al shaab al Filistini fi qita' al Gaza. Iran is not doing anything. Hezbollah is not retaliating, but Yemen's Houthis are doing a lot. And if you remember from our example, because of the Red Sea conflict, because this region was blocked, again the ships had to go all the way down to the Cape of Good Hope and around Africa to reach Europe. So again, shipping costs and time both shot up. This is how this conflict alone God, increased dang. the shipping costs by 40 to 60 percent and caused delays of rerouting by 20 days, eventually to lead to a 15 to 20 percent. and hike in insurance premium and a ton of headache to the indian industries Jesus. this is the second problem with the existing trade route and lastly whenever a ship passes through the swiss canal they have to pay 400000 dollars to 700000 dollars to egypt as a form of tax almost like toll tax oh which again is the cost of trade these are the major problems with the existing swiss canal route so now the question is what do we do we can't stop the terrorists from attacking and we cannot control geopolitics And the only alternate route that we have adds another eight thousand nine hundred kilometers to the shipping route. So, what exactly is the solution? 
Well, it is shocking to know that the entire world has been stuck with this problem for 150 years. So the question is, what can we do differently now? Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the reason why we have something called the India Middle East Economic Corridor which has been proposed by India, US, Europe and the Arab nations. So the question over here is what is so magical about this route that it is now able to solve a 150 year old problem? Well, let's try to understand this by taking the same example as before. So let's say the same trader in Mumbai wants to send his clothes to Europe and he's not able to use the Red Sea route due to the geopolitical conflict. But this time instead of the long route from the Cape of Good Hope, he has a better alternative and that is the IMEC or India Middle East Economic Corridor. IMEC has two legs, an eastern leg and a western leg. In the eastern leg, he would simply use the Indian ports like Mundra or JNPT and this ship would take his goods to a Middle Eastern port like Jabal Ali port in the UAE. Okay. Then these goods would move by rail from the Jabal Ali port in UAE to Israel's Hafia port on the Mediterranean coast after transiting through Saudi Arabia and Jordan. And then the western leg of the corridor would put these containers back on the ships in Hafia and then take them to European ports across the oh. European Union. And here's where we have territories like France, Italy and Germany. Eventually all these goods will reach their respective destinations in Europe. So do you realize oh. people we are breaking the 150 year old bottleneck and more importantly the Israelis and the Arabs have never had such a wonderful relationship in the history of the world. and this route ladies and gentlemen is so so crucial that it gives us three incredible superpowers firstly it reduces our dependence on the swiss canal secondly it could be 40% faster because oh, high speed freight trains would travel at 120 km per hour which is literally four times faster than the ships so this route yeah. is both 30% yeah. cheaper and 40% faster as compared to the swiss canal route and cherry on the cake This route will strengthen our relationship with Europe, US and the Arab countries by a large large extent. So do you realize in spite of being best friends with Russia, Europe and US both are signing such an important deal with us. In spite of the Israel Palestine conflict, we are best friends both with the Israelis and the Arabs. So much so that yeah. we are building the most revolutionary trade route in the history of the world and that too together. This is the power of having a strong diplomatic relationship even during the times of conflict and this is what I consider to be one of the most important contributions of Dr Jay Shankar and guess I hey, man India yeah do yeah thank Jay Shankar man you are absolutely special you are phenomenal creating these bonds these relationships with other countries putting India in such an absolutely incredible position Uh this is truly phenomenal. And yes, this second the second rope. Uh, why does it take 150 years though to to figure this out is it because they needed the relationships in place before this route could even be thrown on the table? Uh because this the like you said 40% faster, 30% cheaper. That seems absolutely amazing and then if the Suez Canal gets blocked, you have an alternate route to get your goods and so inflation doesn't hit India. And you don't have to uh, face those things. That's absolutely incredible. I think India has put themselves in a very, very amazing spot. Uh, Jesus, India's growth is absolutely astonishing, and their ability to create relations with all these other countries and nations around the world is incredible and phenomenal. And India is—it's like people need India. You need it. You got to create a relationship with India. She. It's so what? The story doesn't end here. Do you see what? this map? These are nothing but data cables that connect the entire world to the internet. And every Dang. single country and continent that has internet today is directly or indirectly connected to this vast network of cables. So when you send an Instagram reel to your friend in the US, the data typically travels through a series of cables. It starts from your device and each packet of data including video, text or image, it is routed through the most efficient path possible to reach That's its destination. Crazy. And this packet travels through thousands of miles under the ocean. 
to reach your friend's phone in the US. And this infrastructure is extremely crucial because it supports not just personal communications but even digital communications like business transactions, streaming services and much more. And this cable infrastructure is so so important that 95%, I repeat, 95% of our communication data flows through these cables. Jesus. So if someone cuts off these cables, that particular country or continent will either lose access to the internet or will see a significant drop in its internet capability. And just like how the Red Sea route is a maritime choke point, this is an undersea data choke point of the world. And you know what guys, just like the Houthi rebels attacked cargo ships in the Babel Mandeb, they even attacked the undersea cables in March and damaged these cables. And this is what happened after that. Cable warfare is raging, posing a grave threat to global communication. Three undersea cables in the Red Sea have been cut as a oh result of global internet and telecommunication traffic of Asia, including India, Europe and the Middle East has been rerouted. The Red Sea is the chief target for BMN's Houthi rebels. And you know they say that if you blind a soldier for a minute, you have control of his life. And if you blind a nation for 24 hours, you can take control of that nation. And yeah. these data cables are a gateway to choke us in such a way that any nation can take control of us if they blind us for 24 hours. So yeah. in short, we need to protect this data cable choke point at any cost. The question is, how do we do it? Well, this is where there is a battle between China and the US to capture the undersea cable network. To tell mm. you about it, as of now, American companies have most of the control of these undersea cables. But in the past 10 years, China has been laying its own cables and it's been connecting Europe, Africa and Asia with its own data cables. Oh, in fact, wow. by 2025, they aim to have 60% market share in the undersea data cable market. So if you see this chart, there's a company called HMN Tech, which is a Chinese cable company. Their undersea cables are connecting Africa, South America, Pakistan, Sri Lanka and even other European and Middle Eastern countries. Dang. But just like solar ingots and lithium, here, if we become dependent on China, we are literally giving away our lifeline to our okay. rivals. I so India that. just cannot afford to let this situation happen. This is the reason why, again, IMEC has planned something called Trans-Europe Asia Cable System. This is a 20,000 km cable network which will connect Mumbai and Marseille in France. And just like the IMSE trade route avoided the Swiss Canal route, this submarine cable will avoid the maritime choke point and go via land through UAE and Saudi Arabia. This oh, is the wow. second risk that IMEC is helping India avoid. And lastly, there's something called the interconnected solar grid. And so India is creating their own cable lines. So they don't have to become dependent on China. This is this is incredible. These are so much things that I have no clue about that I'm getting to learn right now. It's truly, truly fascinating. Hydrogen corridor. Solar grid is something that I've already covered in our previous case study, so I'll attach the link to it in the description. For hydrogen, we will again cover it in a separate episode if you would love to know about the hydrogen corridor. But as of now, I think it's already information overload, so let's skip it for this time. But long story short, both the interconnected solar grid and the hydrogen corridor will help us adopt renewable energy faster than ever. This is how the diplomatic masterstroke of India is giving us the superpower of bypassing the Swiss Canal, is helping us bring down the cost of shipping by 30%, it is helping us bring down the time of shipping by 40%, it is helping us protect our data cables and most importantly, this route will put us in the perfect sweet spot to trade with the West while holding a healthy relationship with Russia. This is the power of diplomacy in international relations. And eventually, it brings us to the last part of the episode and that are the lessons that we need to learn from this iconic position of India in world economy. Lesson number one, unless a conflict happens in your backyard, it is not your business to be worried about others' problems. In this case, while Russia and Ukraine have been fighting, while US and Russia have been fighting, we minded our own business and did what is best for us and did not align with anyone. Lesson number two, there is a wise saying which says that in geopolitics, there are no friends, only interests, which means mm. international relations are primarily driven by strategic, economic and security considerations rather than emotional affinity. In this case, no matter how much we feel for the people of Ukraine, we cannot align ourselves with anyone because if we do, we will put our economy at risk and our people at risk. And as much as this sounds brutal, 
even as entrepreneurs we need to understand that a business relationship with no economic or strategic benefit is not a business relationship at all mm. so have healthy relationships but not at the cost of your business and this specially applies for those clients who say do this project for us for free and we will get you more clients with our referrals and lastly always remember diplomacy is the art of telling people to go to hell in such a way that they start <laughs> asking you for directions i repeat <laughs> Diplo the uh, the blows is the art of telling people to go to hell in such a way that they start asking you for directions. I love that. Messi is the art of telling people to go to hell in such a way that they start asking you that's, for directions. That's and Dr. Jay Shankar is clearly great at it. Yeah. So the question is as entrepreneurs are we mastering the art of diplomacy? Mm. Reflect on this question and let me know in the comments. That's all from my side for today guys. If you learned something valuable, please make sure to hit the like button in order to make YouTube Baba happy. I feel like man, India is truly truly phenomenal. India is special. Dr. Jay Shankar is putting them in an incredible position. Modi is putting them in an incredible position. Uh I I mean I they're rising very fast. They're on path to become the next superpower 100%. Um dang It'll be crazy to see what this world looks like in the next 10 years. That's all we have for this video. If you guys liked it, make sure you check out this reaction video as well. Like, like go ahead and click on it. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel. It's your boy, d -Neil. Out.